It is 632 now and it has already been a historic day and in Washington and, and joining us now to talk about uh, what's happening today and why it is so significant is Dr. Janine Craybill. She is an associate professor of political science at CSUB. Dr. Craybill, thanks so much for joining us. I want to start with what we've already seen uh, today. We've already seen kind of a, a, a difference in what is uh, happening right now leading up to the inauguration of, uh, of Joe Biden. I want to just ask you, why is today already so different from what we've typically seen in the past? Well, thank you so much for having me. Uh, part of the reason why it is different is because one, we're dealing with an inauguration during a pandemic. So we haven't experienced that before. Usually Washington DC would have several hundred thousand people uh, attending the inaugural and we we won't be seeing that uh, due to the events that happened uh, on January the 6th, security is much tighter. Uh, this will be a, mostly a virtual uh, celebration throughout the day. Um, and so we, we are seeing some of those differences. And I think another Another difference that we can't help but recognize is that uh, Donald Trump isn't welcoming uh, the Bidens uh, at the White House. There's not going to be a meet and greet there or a traditional tour. Um, as we know earlier this morning at Joint Andrew Space, Donald Trump gave um, some remarks and then him and Melania, the First Lady, are off to Florida to Mar-a-Lago. So in terms of, again, seeing that normal transition of power, that's obviously absent and we haven't seen that in modern presidential history. I have to ask you because we have about, uh, there's less than two and a half hours left in the Trump presidency and then he becomes a, a, a private citizen, he becomes a former president. Yet we're still talking about impeachment. The, uh, is, uh, the impeachment trial is set to happen in the Senate um, after the president uh, becomes a private citizen. What, exa what kind of precedence is this? Has this ever been done before? And, and what, is the, what does the Constitution say about something like this, a, a, a trying a president after he has left office? Sure. Well, within the scope of the Constitution, it doesn't specifically give us exact parameters with regards to in impeachment and a trial period. That's why when there is an impeachment, you have um, our bicameral legislature meet and discuss rules, which they are able to set. Um, however, there is precedent for con you know for a trial and possible conviction of uh, federal officers of the government. We, that's happened with several judges who were impeached, for example, in the House of Representatives. Then they retired their post and they were convicted. So there is precedent on that level. We haven't seen that done um, for a president. Uh, so it will be a bit of a constitutional test, but that doesn't mean that it's not within constitutional bounds now that Donald Trump uh, will be a private citizen. And as soon as Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker of the House, delivers those articles to the Senate, then an impeachment trial will need to commence. Part of that reason for the delay in that since impeachment happened for a second time, which is unprecedented for our president last week is Frankly, the Senate needs to organize itself, uh, you know, since the November election and the Senate Georgia runoff elections, and those two senators should be getting sworn in sometime today or perhaps tomorrow. You talked about this during the first impeachment, you know, a little more than a year ago, saying that it could actually bringing articles of impeachment uh, could hurt Democrats in the long run going to the 2020 election. Do you think something like this, here we are round two, do you think this is going to hurt Democrats in the long run, historically speaking? You know, I think that that was something that, you know, didn't end up hurting Democrats to the extent that we thought, even though, you know, one must concede the fact that Democrats with in regards to the House of Representatives lost, you know, upwards of a dozen seats. Some of those districts, though, that they lost in 2020 were already heavily Republican anyway. I also think, um, you know, Democrats too have some internal division within the party. I don't think to the degree of the Republicans, but you do have some folks that have different versions and visions of what they'd like to see the Democratic Party be. Um, and so, you know, even though some folks didn't vote for Donald Trump necessarily, that didn't translate down ballot um, for Republican uh, candidate losses. However, 
going to this impeachment, we still have two years into the next election, 2022. That's a lot of time. So I think that usually too with midterms, voters are can have a possible refer, referendum on the president because they can't take, they can't vote on the president. So they take it out on the president's party and sometimes that happens. It'll really just depend too on if there's a level of bipartisan support to convict the president. And we like we saw a level of bipartisan support to impeach the president for a second time. And the majority of the American people were behind impeachment. So this is complex and I think that time will tell. I think it's a little early to say whether this will hurt uh, the Democrats come the 2022 midterms. Dr. Janine Cravel, Associate Professor of Political Science at CSUB. It's always great to have you on to kind of put some stuff, put this uh, historical uh, day in context for us. Do appreciate it. Thank you. Take care.